And I look back at the month of October to 2021. So since to October 2021, the interest for gold has gone up uh, in a measured way. A lot has happened since last year on. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, state the obvious. So we're going to be talking about the news coming out of this morning, 4 a.m. Uh, it was reported that Russian troops have started their attack on Kiev and uh, lots going on right there. People are struggling to get out of the city. Terrible, terrible thing happening in Ukraine. So let's talk about market impacts. Gold is up on the news. Well, it has been up for the last four weeks, really. We've breached $1,900 again this morning as we speak. I want to ask you this, Alain. People are talking about gold reacting to the news in Eastern Europe. That re gold is reacting positively to the possibility of an all-out war. But let's look at historical precedents. Just over the last 30 years, I'm not talking about World War II. I'm not talking about since Vietnam. Just the last 30 years, what were the major conflicts that involved multiple nations? Well, the Gulf War in 1991, okay, gold did not move on that news. In fact, it went down. Um, later Later on, in, in 2001, we had 9-11. Uh, uh, gold, yes, started moving yes. up, but for different reasons. Yes. The invasion of Iraq yes. was 2003. Gold already went up, so it didn't really react to that. Yes. So there's no yes. historical precedence over the last 30 years for gold reacting to war. Is that happening now, or is, that, is gold moving up for a different reason? What do you think? I think that uh, uh, the, the, the interest for, for gold uh, has... Uh, um, uh, reflected uh, of the fundamentals and the fundamentals are the market understanding that rates and that was several year, uh, months ago that the market understood that rates wouldn't be able to go much higher and uh, and i look back at the month of october to 2021 so since to october 2021 the interest for gold has gone up uh, in a measured way. And the reason for that is, again, the fact that when you have inflation of 5%, 6%, 7%, <laughs> and your 10-year, 20-year, 30-year nominal rates are half of those numbers or a third of those numbers, the market is already telling you that they don't believe in more growth, that they didn't believe in higher rates, and that we were facing peak growth and peak inflation. This is what the market was telling you four months ago. Yes. And this has gone up crescendo until, yes. until, of course, what happened yesterday and the prior day and a week ago and 10, 10, 10, 10 days ago, the market felt that there was a tension and gold reacted to this tension. But gold, maybe that war uh, uh, that started yesterday was a trigger, but all the yeah. ingredients for a higher gold price were in the making four months ago, and they and they really impacted the price of gold over the last four months, positively. And, and that's an excellent point, Alain, you brought up, because so many people have been telling me, look at how gold's been performing as a safe haven asset in the face of war. Everyone's rushing to this safe asset because war's breaking out. Look what other things yes. are supposed to yes. be doing well, but they're not doing well. But you brought up a good point. Gold's moving up anyway. It's not so much that it's reacting to Ukraine, it's reacting to inflation, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's reacting to inflation, it's reacting to uh, well, to a lot of uncertainty. And again, the fact that we are in a world of growth deceleration. This is the reality. Uh, the fiscal, the monetary stimulus are gone. Uh, and if they are not gone, and if suddenly we'll have a new reversion of policies, it's because yes. the world is falling apart. And nobody believes that the world is falling apart. Okay. So. The reality is, and the main scenario, the more uh, realistic scenario is that growth is, is decelerating and inflation seems to be sticky versus uh, 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 transitory. So sticky inflation, lower growth, a war that has just started obviously makes, makes gold a very attractive investment. Well, some would argue that this war that just started in Ukraine may actually exacerbate inflation problems because when entry prices are going to go up, supply chain issues might become worse. So what do you yes. think? What's your outlook on inflation in light of what's just happening right now? Well, it, it's, really, it's really hard uh, to, to have a very uh, um, serious uh, uh, um, 
to make a serious statement uh, uh, with high conviction, because at this point, it's all about speculation. Really, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody knows. Well, but, the reality is, but, but, but the reality is that there is a higher level of economic uncertainty. This is the reality. And the reality is that this is going to affect the consumers and the companies. This is, uh, there is no way we can go around this reality. Um, how will oil, how will natural gas, how will pelagium, how will wheat react? We know how they are reacting today, but how will they react over the course of this conflict? Probably, probably they are heading higher, probably, yes. but, but this is not, uh, th this is more about speculating rather than about talking about the fundamentals that we, we are living in and that are really pushing, uh, uh, pulling this, this gold price higher. Well, oil does have a precedence of moving up on the outbreak of war. Those conflicts I just mentioned, the yes. invasion of Iraq, Gulf War, huge moves for oil in both situations. So True. you're, you're but, right. But David, imagine, David, imagine that tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, uh, America and Europe uh, 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 find, find, uh, uh, settle with Iran. Yes. Just, just imagine. And this is not pure imagination. There, there are a lot of talk about them, all these parties getting very close to a conclusion. So this could suddenly bring a lot of oil into the market and all that is ready, ready to be delivered, doesn't have to be pumped. So yeah. again, this is all about probabilities of a potential scenarios happening. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not in that, I, I don't play in that field. Uh, okay. uh, I, I look at the reality and the reality is telling us deceleration in growth, inf stick inflation, this is a good ingredient for gold. You have told me before in prior interviews that real interest rates are one of the most important drivers for gold price. So what does this mean for yes. gold? What's your outlook for gold, given everything we've talked about? We think that gold is going, uh, we always uh, described gold, gold as a cyclical asset, always. And you have to, therefore, study it as a cyclical uh, uh, um, uh, product. That cycle, the last bull cycle, started at the end of 2015. Uh, and we are entering a second, uh, the second half of that bull cycle. This is what we, all our uh, 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 instruments are telling us that we're entering that second, uh, second bull, bull market phase. Uh, where is it? A heading, I don't know. Is it going to be 2,500? Is it going to be more? I don't have any idea. But what I know is that uh, gold mines are significantly undervalued yes. versus uh, 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 the, the equity indices. And what I also know is that uh, gold versus other commodities is, <laughs> again, at the trough. So mm -hmm. technically, and uh, on a relative basis, gold and gold mines are massively undervalued, massively. And those levels where we are at today, they remember, re they remind us of the 2015 and 2018 years where suddenly you had a 100 plus return on gold mines again. That was back in 2016, early 2016 and 2018. So uh, the ingredients are in place. Forget what is happening mm -hmm. uh, for gold. Forget what is happening in, in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, this is this is not this is a uh, uh, what is happening there is it's terrible. Herring, yeah. But 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 we should not. We should just remain focused. And the focus, as you said, are rates. The focus is uh, uh, the, the relative valuations of those assets versus others and where we, we sit in, in the cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the English idiom is a, it's a red herring. It's a, it's a distraction. It's not, uh, it's not the main focus here. Okay, let me just no, make one more remark no. and uh, we'll, uh, make one more remark. You did say that inflation has peaked. 
Um, but you also said that gold is reaching a second bull cycle. So again, yes. how do you how do you resolve these two? To me, because, it sounds like a because, dichotomy. Yeah. No, no, David. We, we if you look at inflation and gold, you won't have any correlation. If you look at gold uh, and uh, deflation, you won't have no. You won't have a correlation, long term correlations. Mm -hmm. The correlation stands with the real rates. Okay, got it. So if you have if you have a stable inflation and you have rates going down because rates are going down ultimately they are not going up yeah okay rates Good are point. going down and you will have this uh, uh friendly environment for gold to 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 perform this is this is the reality okay well, the reality this is our reality this is our right. scenario very good thank you for clarifying that i remind very you david yes, one one more more and more point Yes. The, if you look at the forecast, uh, uh, GDP forecast for the first quarter of 2022, it's today, literally, yes. it's today, uh, published by the uh, Federal, Federal Reserve of Atlanta, who are yes. sitting at 1.3%. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's, that's, that's pretty bad, exactly. 